Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. This is my review of the brand new Shure SM4, which is a condenser mic that costs between $200 and $270, depending on the kit that you get. Full disclosure, I bought this with my own dollar dues. If you do want to check it out, I'll throw some links in the description down below. All of my recording settings will be listed in the doobly-doo as well as the description. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Hey, you get a storage box, you get a microphone, a shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch mic stand adapter, extra shock mount rubber bands, a magnetic pop filter, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, this microphone feels fantastic. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill with absolutely no give to it. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. This is a very straightforward mic. On the bottom, you have the XLR port. And whether you care or not, this microphone is made in China. I'm not going to read all of the specs to you, but I will have the graphs up on screen as well as everything listed in the description in case you want to pause or take a closer look at anything. Now I'm spinning around the SM4 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now let's see how effective the provided pop filter is. Please provide pizza pronto. Please provide pizza pronto. Please provide pizza pronto. Please prepare and provide pizza pronto, pals. Now I am right on top of the grill of the pop filter to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it sounds maybe an inch away from the mic. Now I'm about six inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now about one foot away from the SM4, about two feet away from the SM4, and about four feet away from the Shure SM4. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gamers, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here's how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here's how the microphone sounds while my thighs get tired because I am squatting to record this in a completely untreated room six inches away from my mouth. Next, I want to see how effective the microphone and the mount are at rejecting shocks. So I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now I'm going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now let's do a quick spoken word comparison to see how this mic stacks up against the competition. Starting on the Shure SM4, 6 inches off, gain on the 18i20 at 2 o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Let's go to the first mic. Starting on the Audio-Technica AT2020, 6 inches off, gain at 2 o'clock. This microphone costs about $100, and here is how this sounds compared to the SM4. Back for a palate cleanser on the SM4, here's how it sounds, let's move on. Now I am on the SE Electronics X1A, 6 inches off, gain still set at 2 o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. Let's go back and do a whole bunch more. All right, I'm back on the SM4 again, just to clear out your ear canals. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to the next one. Next, I am on the Earthworks SR117, which is a handheld condenser. Six inches off, gain still at two o'clock. This is a relatively neutral microphone, so it'll let us hear the character of the SM4 quite a bit more. This costs $200. Let's do some more. Here we are on the SM4 again, just to cleanse your palate. The palate should be cleansed enough. Let's go on. Now I am on the Shure PGA27, six inches off, gain at two o'clock, no pad and no filter. This microphone costs about $230. And here is how it sounds compared to its brand new sibling. 
You shouldn't be surprised to hear me say that I am back on the Shure SM4 again. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to the next one. Next, I am on the Rode NT1 5th Gen running over XLR, 6 inches off, gain on the 18i20 at 2 o'clock. This microphone costs about $250, and here is how the Rode sounds compared to the Shure. We are now over the hump and halfway done. This is the 6th palette, 6th palette cleanser on the SM4. What's the next mic? Now I am on the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure, six inches off, gain still at two o'clock. This microphone also costs about $270. I think this is pretty much a direct competitor to the SM4. That is enough. Let's do some more comparisons. Hey, it's the SM4 again. You should not be surprised. I am not. Here's how it sounds. Let's hear another microphone. Now I am on the Loughton Audio LA220 first generation, no high pass or low pass filter engaged, six inches off, gain still at two o'clock. This microphone used to cost about $300. I don't know what the new generation costs, but there you go, old gen LA220. Let's do three more comparisons. We are getting very near the end, so here is a palate cleanser on the SM4. Nothing has changed. Let's... Uh, 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 yep. Now I am on the Shure SM27 with no pad and no filter engaged. Again, six inches off, gain at two o'clock, check the lower third. This microphone costs about $350, and here is how this compares to its baby brother, brand new sibling, whatever you want to call it. We have two more to go, so this is your penultimate palate cleanser on the SM4. No big surprise. Let's go to the second to last microphone. Next, I am on the Sennheiser MK4. This doesn't have any pads or filters. I am six inches off. Gain is at two o'clock. This microphone costs about $400. And here is how it sounds compared to the SM4. Let's go back and do one last comparison. And this is the very last sample of the SM4 before we jump to that final microphone right. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI, cardioid pattern, no pad, no filters, six inches off, gain still set at two o'clock. We are living very dangerously. Gain is set way too high for this microphone. This mic costs about $3,700, so this is meant to be a direct and completely fair comparison. It is not meant to be a control from video to video, so get angry about it. And now, <laughs> and now let's jump to the music test. don't think it's too much to ask for. Delivery pizza, popcorn, horror film movie rentals, no responsibilities at all, no no taxes. Is that too much? <laughs> Let's go to the conclusion. All right, it's time for the conclusion, and I think Thur, thur I think Thur, sure, is, is throwing their hat in the ring with two really big heavy hitters, the Rode, the, the Rode NT1 and the Lewitt LCT440. Can we call them Thur from here on out, please and thank you? 
But before we go any further, let's talk about the pros and cons. And first up for the pros, just like pretty much every single Shure mic, is the build quality. It feels absolutely fantastic. As far as the accessories, the shock mount and the pop filter are incredibly effective. And as far as the form factor, it's not the smallest out there. The LCT440 is more camera ready it's gonna block your face less but compared to something like the nt1 this is relatively small then we get to the cons of this microphone and first up for me i found some s's to be a bit sharp and piercing so i ended up wanting to use a de-esser on this thing just to tame those a little bit and then the self noise of this is quite a bit higher than its direct competition it has a self noise of 17 dba which isn't the worst but when you look at the lct 440 that has a 7 dba self noise and the nt1 5th gen has a self noise of 4 dba so the self noise of this is more than 10 dba louder than the competition then i have a wish for accessories that were included this came with a shock mount which is relatively small and it's not the most difficult thing to work with but i wish they also included some kind of firm microphone clip because that would just make working with it in tight spaces like an iso cab that much easier and lastly i have an fyi for you the included pop filter is magnetic and it only clips onto the front of the shock mount so if for whatever reason you needed to use the microphone in a different orientation in the shock mount you wouldn't be able to use the included pop filter which is the exact same story with the lct 440 but just wanted to point that out in case that's a use case for you and now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Shure SM4? As far as the overall sound, I would say this is a bit treblier, a bit more on the airier side of things, and I would classify this as a brighter microphone. In the low end, it is controlled, but it doesn't come across sounding too weak. Then you have this nice and neutral midsection. It doesn't sound scooped, but it also doesn't sound too forward or congested or nasally. And then you have this very prominent boost focused in the treble and air frequencies, which makes this sound very open, very bright, and very detailed. On the electric guitar, it doesn't offer the most robust low end, but it does offer this really clear tone, which can work nicely. On the acoustic guitar, it sounds incredibly exciting and lively, and that is all due to that big boost and the treble and air. I think it works really well here if you want that really exciting sound. For singing vocals, I really enjoyed it here because of that clear bass and midsection. And then thanks to that boost and the upper frequencies, it has this really shimmery top end, which I think can complement the voice nicely. And lastly, for spoken word, you get that controlled low end, that clear midsection, and then this really detailed upper end thanks to the boost and the treble and air. I did find myself wanting to use a de to tame some of the S's because some of them can whistle and be a little bit sharp, but overall, I think it works nicely for spoken word as well if you want that clear tone. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Shure SM4? Both yes and no. As I mentioned, this does have some pretty steep competition in the NT1 and LCT440, and if you're looking for dead silent noise performance from your microphone, I would recommend steering clear of the SM4 because it does have 17 dBA of self noise. The competition outperforms it by quite a bit. The LCT440 is 10 dBA lower at 7 dBA, and the NT1 is 13 dBA dba lower at 4 dba so if noise is incredibly important in your decision i would steer clear of the sm4 and go for one of the alternatives but then we get to a situation where it really is the question of which microphone do you like the sound of better because they all sound good and they all offer something different the NT1 is more neutral sounding, more in the bass section, and much less exaggerated in the treble and air. The LCT440 also has more bass, but more of a forward sound in the upper mids, but still plenty of treble and air. 
and then the SM4, very controlled low end, neutral mids, and then a big focus in the treble and air, which makes it sound very open, very bright, and very detailed. And if that's the sound profile that you're looking for, and the 17 dBA self noise is not going to cause any issues, then I think this is a really interesting package between 200 and 270 bucks.